look at the molar volume. Now, Avogadro's law is something that's overlooked a little bit. So make sure you learn off this definition. Again, 2021 was a big one for this one, where they were given a set of conditions and they had to explain why a couple of thin things had the same volume at the same temperature and pressure, and basically give that definition and you're golden. Okay, so what is it? Equal volumes of gas contain equal number of molecules under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. Now, that's a bit waffly, but that's where the molar volume comes in. So at the same set of conditions of temperature and pressure, regardless of what the gas is, that number of moles is going to have the same number of molecules. And that, that volume is going to have the same number of moles. So if I have nitrogen monoxide plus oxygen to give me nitrogen dioxide, and I use this as my example. So from before, I gave us X law, and you were looking at the ratio between substances. So between nitrogen monoxide and oxygen is a two is to one ratio. If I have 200 centimeters cubed of nitrogen monoxide, I will need 100 centimeters cubed of oxygen. If I use 100 centimeters cubed of oxygen, I will form twice as many, or twice the volume of nitrogen dioxide. So you'll form 200 centimeters cubed. Now, for the molar volume, it doesn't matter what the gas is. So for nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide, the ratio between those two is the same. So technically the number of moles of both of them is the same. If the number of moles of them is the same, they are going to form the same volume at the same temperature and pressure. So whether I have, so let's talk about STP. So standard temperature and pressure, which we saw before. STP, the temperature, is 273 Kelvin, and the pressure is 100 kilopascals. If I was carrying this out at STP, I know exactly what the volume of those are going to be. So if I have one mole of a gas, at STP. It could be oxygen, it could be nitrogen, it could be ethene, it could be ethyne, it could be benzene. One mole of any gas at STP will occupy 22.4 litres of space. Now, that's important because you will need that for the molar volume. Let's talk about RTP. RTP is room temperature and pressure. The temperature is 298 Kelvin and the pressure is 100 kilopascals. The only difference between STP and RTP is the temperature is bigger at room temperature and pressure. If the temperature is bigger, then the volume is going to be bigger. One mole of any gas, it doesn't matter what the gas is, at RTP will occupy 24 litres of space. If I had two moles of the gas at, S at RTP, that would occupy 48 litres of space because if one mole is 24, two of it would be twice as big. Now, using that here, if I'm told that this reaction is happening at STP, so standard temperature and pressure, and I know the number of moles of nitrogen monoxide. Let's call that um, two moles, because that's what's in front. It's reacting with one mole of oxygen and it's forming two moles of nitrogen dioxide. Now, using what I know about the molar volume, you can actually work out what the volume of each of those substances is at STP. One mole of any gas at STP occupies 22.4 liters of space. So that's the volume of the oxygen. Now use the ratio. You're using two moles of nitrogen monoxide. So the volume is going to be twice that. So that would be 44.8 litres. And same for nitrogen dioxide. It will be 44.8 litres. Now, where did I get those from? That's actually where the triangle comes in. And it's something that most textbooks actually teach it like that. And then people go, well, how did you get there? So I've put a triangle into your notes and I want you to use it. So I've written it out again over here. What I just did was I was finding the volume 
So I took the number of moles that I'm using in the reaction and you multiply it by the molar volume if you were doing it that way. Now I was using gay Lussex law, but let's do that in a particular example. Now, in your notes, I've got loads of worked examples involving this, but they're a little bit further on where there's way more in-depth calculations, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Now, let's go through the worked example on page 78, just to kind of highlight each step. Okay. And how do I know I need to use this? So we're told sodium reacts with chlorine to form sodium chloride. Like that. Calculate the minimum volume of chlorine in litres that is needed to react completely with 0 0.92 grams of sodium at RTP. Now, you're asked for volume and you're told RTP in the question. Straight away, you've hit the jackpot because then you can use the molar volume triangle and you don't need to bother with the more difficult method of PV equals NRT. Now, you're going to have to plan this out in a couple of steps because I'm given the mass of sodium, but I want the volume of chlorine. Now, this links back to unit the earlier in unit three where we were looking at stoichiometry and relating moles in a question. Now, way back in unit, Three. We all know I love a good table. These are really useful. And any time I'm working with moles on a balanced equation, I always use a table. So my table is mass in grams, the RMM, which is grams per mole, and then moles at the bottom. told that it was 0 0.92 grams of sodium and I want to find the volume of chlorine. Now from my triangle, let's have a look at the triangle, I know it's all the way back over here. I want to find the volume of chlorine. So I need to find the number of moles of it first and then multiply it by the molar volume. This is at RTP so the molar volume will be 24 litres per mole. So step one, find the moles of chlorine. Which is this number down here. So we're going to work down and across. My sodium, the RMM of sodium, let's double check it from the log tables, it's 23. Now remember, when you're getting the RMM, you never multiply by the number in front. That 2 is taken into account down here at the bottom. So moles is mass divided by RMM. Be 0 0.04 moles. In the exam, you get three marks for that. Now, use that to find the moles of chlorine. To work across, you are always comparing the ratio of my substances. So I want the ratio of sodium to chlorine. Now, look at the numbers in front. There's a 2 in front of the sodium, and there's a 1 in front of the chlorine. That is a 2 is to 1 ratio. If I start with two moles of sodium, I will need half as many moles of chlorine. We're not starting with two moles, we're starting with 0 0.04. And you will still need half as many moles, it's a 2 is to 1, so that would be 0 0.02 moles of chlorine, you just divide by 2. That's three marks. I now know the number of moles of my chlorine. The volume is equal to the moles multiplied by the molar volume. Now double check, was this at RTP? It is. Room temperature and pressure is 24 litres per mole. I'm multiplying 0 0.02 by 24. So 0 0.02 times 24 is 0 0.48. Now what are my units? You're multiplying moles by litres per mole. Your moles divided by moles, that cancels, leaving me with litres. So my answer in litres is 0.48 litres. Now that's only really relevant if you're asked for your units in a particular value. So if she wants your answer in centimetres cubed, you then need to multiply that by a thousand. 
The second step, calculate the mass of sodium chloride that can be made from 960 centimeters cubed of chlorine at or TP and an excess, apologies, I should say sodium. Right, so calculate the mass of sodium chloride. I need this. However, but my numbers are going to be different now because the volume of chlorine that's used is different. If the volume is different, the number of moles of chlorine is going to be different. So now in this part, I'm actually working back to find the number of moles of chlorine, then use that to find the moles of sodium chloride and work towards the mass. So I'm going to rub this out and start with my new figures. So this is for part two. I'm just going to grab my eraser. this out as well because we're told in this part of the question that the sodium is in excess. If sodium is in excess, I don't care about it. So I'm going to leave it completely blank. Now for chlorine, we're told that the volume of it was 960 centimeters cubed. So the volume is 960. Rearrange my equation. I want the moles. Moles is equal to volume divided by molar volume. Now you're going to have a problem. You're dividing centimeters cubed by meters. You can't do that. Your units have to be consistent. So in the question, the volume is 960 centimeters cubed. I'm going to put that into liters. So that would be 0 0.96 liters divided by the molar volume at RTP is 24 liters per mole. So 0.96 divided by 24 is 0 0.04 moles. So it's actually twice as many as what we had in the previous bit. I know that I now have 0 0.04 moles of my chlorine. You get three marks for that. Now, use that to find the number of moles of the sodium chloride. Now, to work across the table, you always compare the ratio. It's the ratio of chlorine to sodium chloride. That ratio is 1 is to 2. One mole of chlorine will make twice as many moles of sodium chloride. I'm starting with 0 0.04 moles of chlorine. I will make twice as many moles, which is 0 0.08 moles of sodium chloride. Good three. Now the RMM of sodium chloride, remember, you're not multiplying by the number that's in front. I only care about what the molecule itself is. That would be 23 for sodium plus 35.5 for chlorine, which is 58.5 grams per mole. Now you generally don't get marks for the RMM. Then the mass is the number of moles multiplied by the RMM. Now it's this number of moles because I'm trying to find the mass of sodium chloride it will be 0 0.08 multiplied by 58.5, which is 4.68 grams for three. Now, the volume and the molar volume. It's a really nice question because it ties in really nicely. And as you can see, there's loads of different places for this type of question to come up. It's a great question. If it was me, there's always a mole question in question 10 or 11 for 25 marks. Now, they'll give you a reaction and you'll probably have to work out the mass of a product. You might have to work out the limiting reagent. If one of those substances in that equation is a gas, I am always going to ask you about the volume of a gas at STP or RTP because it's a really handy extra three marks to throw into a question and it's testing your knowledge of the gas laws as well. So it can come up anywhere. It's not limited to a gas loss question. It can be absolutely anywhere where you have a gaseous substance.